Thank you, Dean Stoll. It's a privilege and an honor to be here today. Dean Stoll asked me just to have a few brief words, so if you don't mind. Um, congratulations to each and every one of you who made it here today. You have overcome an amazing amount of odds to be at this place, and you're more special than any of you can imagine. For thousands of generations before you, for tens, hundreds of thousands of years, your forebearers were able to avoid being eaten by dinosaurs, devoured by plagues, killed in wars, succumbed to disease, drowned on the seas, killed in duels, buried in earthquakes, stuck in tar pits, and struck down by the myriad of fates that befell generation upon generation for the millennium. Avoided all of those fates and more before they were able to create and pass along the crucial DNA, which got handed down and down and down to finally reach your parents so it could become you. And you're a pretty good looking bunch as well. You had to be coming from such a gene pool. Imagine all of the family before you, which had to be found appealing enough to attract a mate. Most had teeth and hair and eyes and the stuff that other people found pleasing enough to cause them to want to mate with them. And the unfortunate ones who didn't have the right looks or couldn't run fast enough or get up in the trees quick enough or weren't strong enough or simply couldn't adapt, well, they got eaten or succumbed to disease or the elements or something and they just kind of went away. You, on the other hand, are the gifted ones. You are the ones who came from the strongest and the smartest and sometimes the luckiest. You are the ones most able to adapt and to continue and to succeed. So here you are today in 2010, graduating from UCLA, once again showing that you are by all counts among the best and the brightest and most appealing members of the human race that have ever lived. You have validated the selection process that preceded you and take it to new heights to be the best of the best. And not only did you come from a long line of people who succeeded, but you are personally a group of people determined to succeed. The process that led you to gain admission to a top university as UCLA and through which you persevered to graduate shows that you are among the most elite creme de la creme, that you're determined to go places and bring achievement to new heights. You come from a tree of life that is so exceptional, it's no wonder that you're here today. Barring the unforeseen, barring get hit by a car or not taking care of your health, I think you can expect to be here approximately another 500,000 hours. Then the 60 trillion molecules that made up your physical body will simply one day separate from each other and go and do something else. So now that you know you come from a long line of achievers and successful people, what are you going to do with those approximately 500,000 hours waiting in front of you? Well, you may not know this, but each and every one of you is already a CEO. You are President and Chief Executive Officer of You Incorporated. And starting today, You Inc. holds a bachelor degree from one of the great universities. It's you Inc's biggest asset and all that has been put inside you to get to it. There's a reason that today is called commencement. Everything commences from here. It is a beginning. 40 years ago, I sat here myself contemplating my own beginning, a philosophy major in the School of Humanities at UCLA. I had no idea where it was going to take me, but I was proud and excited as each of you no doubt are as well. During these last 40 years, I've been very fortunate. So I'd like to share with you the things that I have learned which have been the most valuable to me. There are things which I've learned in my own journey and also things which I've observed from those who have been successful. I've put them in a list of 10 recommendations. I figured De David Letterman has his top 10. Every movie critic has their top 10, so I'm going to give you my top 10. Number one, take care of your health. 
you have only one body. Everything you do originates from within this physical shell. And you can't do anything successful on an ongoing basis if you're doing it from an unhealthy one. It will under, inevitably undermine all your endeavors if you don't. Eat well, exercise, take time to breathe, take time to relax. I like to say my first appointment of the day must be with myself. To exercise, to stretch, to breathe, Take care of your body and it'll take care of you. Two, listen. From listening comes wisdom. It takes courage to stand up and speak, but it also takes courage to sit down and listen. Three, never give up. I have seen repeatedly again and again that the greatest achievers of success share this trait in common. They persevere. They push themselves to their limits and beyond their limits. Winston Churchill, one of my heroes, faced one of the most formidable challenges of all time. Yet he was able to motivate his nation to stand up against all odds. He said, never give up, never give up, never, ever give up. Thomas Edison said, nearly every man who develops an idea works it up to the point where it looks impossible, and then he gets discouraged. Yet that's the very time not to become discouraged. Most of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Abraham Lincoln failed in business in 1831. He was defeated for the legislature in 1832. He had another failure in business in 1833. He had a nervous breakdown in 1836. He was defeated for Speaker of the Illinois House in 1838 defeated for elector in 1840, defeated for Congress in 1843, defeated for the Senate in 1855, defeated for vice president in 1956, defeated for the Senate again in 1858, elected president in 1860. My first job was at Hanna-Barbera Studios. I had been honing my skills for some time as a writer after getting out of college. I wrote many, many spec scripts, hoping to sell them, probably 50 or more. I hadn't sold one, but I thought I was a pretty good writer. One day I had an opportunity to get a job at Hanna-Barbera Animation. I thought this would be great. I'd be working, writing animated TV shows, it was a little bit beneath me since I had been writing many more important things than Smurfs and Scooby-Doo and the Flintstones, but that was okay. It was a good place to start. Well, it turned out the job that they had was not as a writer as I had thought it was, but rather it was cleaning out the Hanna-Barbera warehouse. <laughs> Here I was, a college graduate, and I thought of myself as somewhat of an intellectual guy, and I'm working cleaning a warehouse. Nevertheless, every day I would go on my lunch hour to Joe Barbera's office and I'd ask his secretary if she would give my latest script that I wrote on spec to Mr. Barbera so he could read it and surely I would be his hot new story guy. Not. This went on for months and months and how demoralizing it was. Yet I continued and one day it seems that Mr. Barbera had sold so many shows to all the networks that he couldn't possibly get them written with his existing staff. He grabbed me from the warehouse and he said, okay kid, you're up. You'll start with me this season. So on Yogi's All-Star Laugh Olympics, I started my career as a writer working at the foot of the master. And from there, I went to the Flintstones and the Smurfs and Scooby-Doo and Jetsons and others. A diamond is just a chunk of coal that sticks to its job. Four, accept all invitations. It's impossible to know what lies around the corner. What fascinating person, what great idea, what wonderful opportunity. But life is made to be lived and we must get out there and be proactive to optimize its possibilities. Go out and meet life every single day. Every opportunity that is presented to you is a chance to meet somebody special, to learn something new, to help someone, to enrich your life and others. When I had been working my first job as a writer at Hanna-Barbera, after a couple of years, somebody asked me if I wanted to meet this French guy who had a studio we shared in Taiwan. He didn't know anyone in LA, he spoke very little English, 
And I spoke French, so I went along. The next thing I knew, I had an opportunity to move to Paris and to help start an animation studio there. And that led me to eventually take on that company, buying it from the original owners, moving it to Los Angeles, and eventually had the good fortune with others to build it into the largest producer of children's entertainment. Five, read every day. There are only two ways to expand your mind and learn. It's by the people you meet and the content you read. The person who knows how to read and doesn't is no better off than the person who doesn't know how to read at all. Education doesn't stop when you finish college. It's a lifelong process. You must feed your head continuously. You're an athlete in training and you need to keep your mind sharp to compete. Knowledge is the only thing which doesn't cost anything to consume. And no matter how much you consume, you still won't get fat. <laughs> Six, smile. What an amazing asset is a smile. It is so simple. It's free. It pays the biggest dividends. It's a passport that takes you anywhere you want to go. And it's the cheapest way possible to improve your looks. <laughs> a smile is contagious. The more you give, the more it pays dividends. And you are increasing the happiness quotient in the zeitgeist, and you're making the world a more beautiful place. Seven, give service to others. The more you do, the better you will feel. The more you help others, the more you invest in your world, spiritually, materially, culturally. There's magic in service. Don't look for payback. Besides, the dividends will always come when you least expect them. In 1993, I sold my company to ABC and I was asked to help out by the ABC executives with the Omaha Children's Theater because it was the pet charity of one of the shareholders. I provided them with some stories and character work. I later learned that it belonged to Warren Buffett. This led to a relationship which, with his help, years later, my wife and I launched our new company. Eight, laugh. I can't tell you that people who laugh live longer than people who don't, but I really do believe that. I can't tell you it's the best medicine, but I believe that too. But I can tell you that people who laugh enjoy life more than people who don't. There's humor in everything. See it, celebrate it, be a part of it. Be an optimist. Why? The optimist is wrong just as often as the pessimist. Well, the answer is that he's happier. <laughs> Being an optimist is an active attitude adjustment which makes you and everyone around you feel better. Nine, be kind. Be especially kind to unkind people. They need it the most. It will neutralize them. <laughs> Anger is powerless when confronted with kindness. Kindness is the oil that takes the friction out of life. 10, live with integrity. Warren Buffett says it takes 20 years to build a reputation, yet you can lose it in five minutes. When you lose money, you've lost nothing. When you lose your health, you've lost something. When you lose your character, you've lost everything. Imagine putting character even ahead of health. Yes, because it's all that endures. Lastly, don't forget to love. Bring it to everything you do. Friends, family, your work, your planet. It transcends, it transcends yourself. It gives continuing purpose. Congratulations, graduates. Be proud of yourselves. Go out and do great things.